Just as computers, when they started, were the size of a building, and now every one of us has one on their desk or even in their pocket, we want to do the same thing for particle accelerators. Particle accelerators are some of the most fascinating and certainly the largest machines that we as a society have ever invented and built. They are incredibly versatile, being used in everything from fundamental science over uh, medical applications, energy applications, material science, food, uh, producing the brightest x-rays on the planet and security and defense. There's really no part of our industrial society that isn't touched by them. However, they are far and few between. They are campus-sized machines that cost many, many billions of dollars. And so their use is very limited today by just their scarceness and their price tag. We started Tau Systems, building compact particle accelerators. We shrink them down where they are, instead of the size of a campus, are now the size of a normal industrial machine. And by doing that, we can make them ubiquitous and we can unleash their potential now everybody can use them. And so with that, their actual potential and their real impact can be realized. And that's what we're doing at Tau Systems. The thing is, once you launch something into space, it will experience radiation. There's a lot of radiation in space. There's no escaping it. And the higher you go, when you leave the Earth atmosphere and when you leave the Earth magnetic field, you lose the shielding and so you will encounter radiation. For electronics it's a big problem. They get upsets in the electronic, they can get damage in the electronics and you need to test for that before you launch because once you're up there it's really not possible to fix it anymore. Currently the fastest radiation hardened CPU is somewhat slower than a Pentium 3. It's 30 years behind. So if you want to do AI in space, well, you can't. You don't have the compute power. Any long-term commercial application that goes really out of low Earth orbit, middle Earth orbit, geostationary orbit, moon bases, mining of asteroids, manufacturing in orbit, going to Mars, all these are long-term missions that take a long time. They will encounter a lot of radiation. They will require a lot of automation, and therefore we do want to use AI and machine learning and all these things we use here on Earth. And to do that, we need very, very different electronics engineered specifically for that. And to do that, we need to test. And right now, a lot of this testing gets only done at very, very few, very large accelerators. With our offering, we can enlarge the availability of test time by a factor 30. There's a huge demand that is currently not being met and we will be able to do that. The, the plan behind Tau basically is we are pushing very, very hard to demonstrate the first commercial application of a laser-driven particle accelerator and we'll basically have this operational with customers in the next year. So this is the near-term vision. The midterm, we are expanding into semiconductor metrology. There is a huge demand. Our laser accelerators are also some of the brightest X-ray sources we can make. They rival a large synchrotron in brightness. And there are applications that you can do only on a, on a very large synchrotron right now in, for example, 3D imaging of, of chips. There are smaller machines that can do the 3D imaging, but they take 16 hours for a single measurement and our machine will be able to do this in less than a minute. With our machine, we can bring this from failure analysis to inline metrology and really build a tool that can go in production lines. And that's sort of our midterm vision for the next three to seven years or so. And the long-term outlook, what we're really working on and where we have as the first company in the world a laser-driven free electron laser that can ultimately push the laser wavelength down into the extreme ultraviolet and soft x-ray, which makes a new lithography source for even smaller structure sizes and ultimately even a single atom structure quantum chip type applications. I think the biggest challenge that we're facing as a company is that hardware is hard. 
It takes a long time to develop something. It's much faster to write an app. It takes much more time to develop a new machine. And it's also expensive. Getting this together and finding the support uh, that allows us to work consistently over a long enough time with enough resources to be successful, I think that is part of the biggest uh, challenge there. The technology, we have super bright people, we have that in hand, we know what to do, we know how to do it, but it takes money and it takes time and so we are very fortunate to have found investors that believe in our vision and have the patience to back it, both in Team Global, who are our founding investors, and now Quantum Nation, who are leading our Seed Plus round here. Quantum Nation has really specialized on commercializing physics tech, if you want, technology developed in universities in physics and physics affinite engineering departments. And that's what we're doing. We, we developed a technology, we've shown the science, and now it's about making it real. And I think this is part of the core vision of Quantum Nation as well. And this is why it's such a great fit. We basically share this desire to see something in the lab and see physics understanding become a factor of change in the world, of having an impact. We're looking forward to our joint journey over the next 10 years or so.